Well, I thought I'd do this. I had a question the other day in the comments about somebody asking about the torque amplifier, what it is, what it does, basically. And I got thinking, well, I got three different examples of what this actually does. Now, when I do videos like this, like I, I had a comment on the one where I was disking with the neighbor's tractor. I said it was four-wheel drive. I had to be corrected that it was front wheel assist. When I do these videos, I try to keep them in generalities. I, mean, I understand how this stuff works. I'm just not the best one to describe this stuff. I try to break it down to a level where more people are going to understand it. Instead of just going into all the technical parts of it and talking about stuff they might not actually know, but they're curious about. And so, like I said, I try to keep it simple. I don't need to go into the complete everything, you know. Most people that's got SUVs, they got four-wheel drive. They don't understand that the traction control and all that stuff that's involved with that. So all they know is they got four-wheel drive. So that's why I try to keep it to the level where people can understand it better. Or makes sense, you know. And like, and I'm sure other people here on other videos talking about, like on this tractor, International called it a torque amplifier. And what it is, is the planetary pack, series of gears, connected in, in the transmission. And like this, this tractor, what they all could, there's standard transmissions and synchronized. If they're synchronized, you can shift them while they're moving. Most of these older tractors are not that. They just have a standard and it's uh, one, two, four gears, and this is park, you got reverse, this is high range and low range. So what you end up with is eight gears forward, two gears reverse, and then you got the torque amplifier. And that is, like I say, a planetary pack back in the engine that's hydraulically, I say this is where I don't know it's not hydraulically driven, it's hydraulically shifted. And the purpose of this is, why they call it a torque amplifier, that when you pull the lever back into the torque drive, you're shifting the gears in that clutch pack. And it's reducing, making a gear reduction to whatever gear it's in. So this essentially makes a 16 forward or four reverse. And I said, I'm not, don't know all the specs or the exacts, but it, what it'll do, it'll slow your speed. We'll go back. If, if you're pulling a hill, say you're pulling a load of hay up a hill and you start bogging down, you know, you're going along at 2100 RPM, all of a sudden you're down to 15, you're losing power. You pull that torque, you'll likely jump up to about 1900 RPM, so you're increasing horsepower. You're reducing the gear, which is giving you more torque, and you're able to keep moving. The benefit of the torque amplifier is you can shift it while you're moving. Where these, you have to be stopped to shift. And unless you time it right, it can be done shifting while you're moving. Just can't shift it like a truck. But you can float gears a little bit if you time it just right. But this, not only can you gear it down, you gear it back. The best way to explain what this is going to do is, and it's not exact, but essentially drops you a gear where you don't have to stop to shift it. And then like when you clear the hill, you get to the top and you start picking up speed again, you can ease that forward and gear it back up and regain your speed and go. So like I say, and newer tractors, they're shift on the fly. They're basically automatic transmission. They shift as whatever requirements the valving says it to do. Like I say, back when these tractors are made, you know, gears were the thing to go with and people wanted the option to shift, but it only gives you that one range. 
And like I say, international calls of the torque amplifier. And again, that's basically the simplest way to explain it, I think. If you really want a detailed about how this works, if you want to see one tore out of the tractor, go to just a few acre farms. Pete there, he's restored several international tractors, and he worked on one here. It was just back February and March where he had the whole transmission out of that tractor. He had every gear, every bearing, everything out of that transmission case, which is basically what you got to do to replace a torque amplifier in this tractor. You got to tear the whole thing apart to get to it. And he went through the whole thing. He gives detailed explanations how it works, how the valve body shifts it around, how the gears engage, how basically you tear it apart, put it back together from start to finish, boom. And like I say, if you really want the detailed version, I don't know exactly what video it is, but like I say, it's just been here in the last couple months. And I say, he's the one, if you want an explanation down to the detail, he, he's good at explaining that. But it, that's what this is. It's basically just a clutch pack that reduces the gears and stuff as it's on the fly and gives you, so you can pull better. Like I say, even in the field plowing, you're pulling up the hill, you're losing power, you pull the lever back and you just go. Until, unless it's a really hard pull, then you'll bog it out and then you'll have to stop the shift. But, but it gives you that option to regain some power and torque without stopping. Then we come to the white, my white 270. This has what's called an over-under transmission. And that'd be this lever here. Instead of that one is essentially a two-speed, this is a three-speed. And again, I'm not saying these are the same. The principle behind them is the same. The designs are different. But the purpose of them, the, 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 re the whole reason why they exist is for the same reason. But each company goes a different way about doing it. Let me get back here. The easiest way to show this. Now this one has... A six speed transmission with two reverses and you can see the shift pattern you got six three r two four five one r reverse one two it's a double h pattern so when you get to neutral you can drop down into the lower ranges and shift back and forth or go up in the upper ranges and then that lever there this like I say this has what's called over under drive let me get up on the seat there. Yeah, my nice new stiff seat. And this works basically the same way as that over there. Right now, right there is under drive. And then you can jump it up to direct drive. And then you can jump up to overdrive. And the only thing you got to watch on this one is if you are in under drive, you're freewheeling. If you're going down the hill with this in under drive, there's no holding the tractor back. You only got the brakes. In direct drive or overdrive, you got the engine pressure and the pressure of the, of the transmissions holding you back. And again, this is the same thing. You shift it on the fly. The only thing you don't, you do not do with these things. If you were going down that hill and you want to slow down, you don't drop it down. You only do this as you, if you're losing power up the hill. If, if you drop these down, you can strip them shafts right out, pull them gears right out of the tractor. Now like this one, yeah, if you're in direct drive and you want to drop it in underdrive, it ain't gonna be a problem. You're just gonna pick up speed, you ain't holding back. But in that case, you don't want to be in underdrive and then drop it up in overdrive. So basically, if you are picking up speed you don't want to drop this down. If you're maintaining speed, you can drop it up. You, you know, if you're losing speed, then you can drop it down. It's basically the thing you should follow on all these. Now, um, yeah, let me get back off. Now this, the over-under, is a whole separate thing 
from this point here back to the firewall is the over under transmission. It's all in front of the transmission. All this underneath here is your gear sets and everything. That is one nice thing about the white. If anything happens to that, now I put a clutch in this tractor three years ago. I got videos of it on my other channel. But most tractors, you got to put jack stands and split it here to get in the clutch. Well, this one here, you, all you got to do is pull the motor. And the one thing I hate about these, I ain't going to see it. These are connected with, at the end of this transmit, this over under, there's a gear. And the shaft that comes out of this transmission, there's a gear. And they mesh up and you there's a chain that wraps around it. And that's your drive coupler back and forth. You just drop that chain off. Disconnect your fuel lines, cables, wiring, everything. Pull the four bolts on the motor and you can lift the thing right up out of it. And then you can put this up on a bench, rebuild it, and all that. So this is a little bit easier design to work on. Um, is it better or not? I don't know. I mean, an international guy will argue that... Uh, Torque amplifier is better, and a white guy will say an over under is better. Ford will say a du dual power is better. I haven't had problems with any of them. They all seem to do their job. They seem to work. Yeah, you can't see that coupler from here, but yeah, this is the whole thing right here. Right here's your flywheel and this transmission back. So, oh, and if you want to see learn more, get more in detailed about an over-under transmission, Oliver Farm Boy 66 is a channel to go to. I think it was just last year, maybe a year and a half ago. He overhauled one of his tractors, did redid the motor, and he had one of these tore apart, cleared down to everything out of the case. Or uh, Chris Lucy. Um, I can't think of what his channel name is now. He's another one. He tears into these all the time. He's done several of them. And the thing with these is the older Olivers, when they first came out, these these were two speed. Then over time, they've jumped up to this three speed over under. I guess they are interchangeable. I'm not gonna swear for sure because, like I said, I'm not an expert on every brand. I know. I think say more than just the basics, but I don't know the details, histories of it. But uh, say trying to think else. You know, that's another another. I'll give it another benefit of the white. If anything happens in this, where something implodes in there, the clutches or anything, that's a self-contained unit. You're only contaminating. Uh, four quarts, five quarts oil, whatever's in that. It's not like that international, if something goes bad, even like the brakes on that tractor, they're a wet brake. I had the linings disintegrate on that thing. I rebuilt the brakes on that tractor. And when I pulled the hydraulic filter, I ended up changing the hydraulic, well, hydraulic transmission is all one system in that tractor. And I had to drain that out and replace the filter. And I mean, there's just flakes that break breaks in that filter housing so they say that one goes bad since it's all contained one unit one system you can contaminate the whole thing at least this one this is contained in this one transmissions contained here the hydraulics are up here something grenades in hydraulics because there's a uh because transmission is gear oil this is hydraulic oil and this one I guess you can swap it over, but I actually have AT, ATF fluid in this. That's what's always been what they came with. But I guess you can drain them out and put hydro, uh, regular high trans hydraulic oil in there. And it wouldn't affect nothing. We did that on the 880 Oliver we had. We dumped for years power, uh, ATF in the power steering, but it leaked so bad. It was just cheaper. We finally just started dumping hydraulic oil in it. Well, it's going to hurt that system any anyhow. It, was, it leaked so bad. You basically filled that thing twice a day. But I guess that's essentially the basics of this uh, a white 270 with an over-under. So we'll go look at 
another one yet. Since it's a little breezy out, and there ain't really nothing to show on the outside of the tractor on this one. But this the Ford, they had the system what they called the dual power. And again, that's a similarly type system. It's in the transmission, which is underneath my feet. It's an internal one. So again, there's nothing really to see. Uh, now Ford, they have the same thing that's got you get one, two, four, three, and reverse, and then high low right here. So it's a four by two system too. So it's eight forward, four reverse or two reverse. Now Ford and this is a non-synchronized transmission. Now Ford does have a synchronized transmission. And if it's a synchronized transmission, if you're in low range. You can shift through the gears, you shift it like a truck. You can clutch it and shift the gears, but you can't shift from like fourth to fifth gear on the move. If you want to go into high range, you'd have to come to a stop, but then you still got that shift there. And then uh, the dual power is this button here on the floor at my feet. And it's just like a dimmer switch on the car. For those of you who know what that is, you just bump that. I got to get my light bulb fixed. There's two indicator lights up here. Only one works. Okay, that's right now it's in direct. You see the orange light came on. That means it's in the low drive. I gotta get that bulb fixed. But, but it's again, this basically the same thing as the international. Again, you do not want to drop this to the low if you're going down a hill, gaining speed. Uh, if you're going uphill, you're losing speed, you hit that, it increases your torque, lowers your, or raises your RPMs. Um, oh, what else was I going to say about it? On this tractor, this one here, and I'd say that international engages smooth. When I drop it down the torque, I just pop the lever and drop it. Now when I go back to the high side, I ease it up in. The white, there's really no easing it in. You just pop the lever and it shifts pretty smooth. Now this tractor, from fifth gear down, it shifts pretty smooth. Sixth gear could get a hop to it. Like I say, if I'm going from the low to the high, it might get a jump to it engage a little rougher than I want. I do not engage to the high side on this tractor in seventh or eighth gear while I'm moving unless I push the clutch in. Now this hill above our house up here, when I pull that hill, if I like pulling a load of manure, I can't quite pull that hill. So I'll pop this, drop it into the low. Then when I get up and around the corner, when I get around the corner, I'll clutch it, hit that again, and ease the clutch out just like I was shifting a regular manual transmission. Because if you do this like an eighth gear on road speed, I ain't no jerk. And that, to me, that back, you're going to have backlash in there. The torque of that just re engaging, I wouldn't doubt you would shear bolts off in there or something at some point. Things wear more, they're stressed. So I just don't. Do it that way. I tr try to do it where, however, it's going to engage the easiest. Now, depending, unless you let it, like I say, you don't want to be going 12 mile an hour and jump it up. If I was, I might idle it down, get it down to like 12 or 1400 RPMs and do that. Something that try to just keep it engaging as easy as it can. Because I don't want to replace it again. I have replaced it in this tractor one time. Or I've had it replaced, I should say. Don't know what happened. I was just going up the road. Actually going to plow. Got halfway up towards the heifer barn on the other road. And all of a sudden, it just basically had no... Well, it moved, but barely moved. And I was able to limp it up and get it in the yard. And here... I don't know what happened. Whatever happened... Clutches went out of it, blew a seal, blew, whatever, but basically 
lost all the drive to it. And I'm not sure, but I'm, I'd have to get the IT manual out I got for this. I almost think there's just a panel on the side. It's like a pump on one of, like this is a hydraulic pump. I think there's probably, maybe on the other side, just a plate you take off, the pump comes out. Like say, if you watched, go watch Pete's video on the hydraulic pump on them internationals. That's where they are. There's a pump on the side, you just unbolt, comes off. And, uh, it might be simple. So this one might be simpler to work on in the international. But again, all these systems, the principle is basically the same. It's a different system to do it. I don't know about other manufacturers. John, well, John Deere, they they have their power shift. They have, um, Oh, what the hell is I don't think they have anything like this, like a dual power thing. Everything's done through the transmission lever. Now, this here, this button ain't just... It's just one of the ways they set up. Some, my neighbor had a um, TW20, and he had a, like a double pedal. He had a here and here, and it had a pivoting mechanism, and it had the rods that went through the floor. And low, he'd push here, and high, he'd push here to shift it back and forth. His 9600s have two buttons on the floor, and this one, and you go back and forth between them. Some of them have a toggle switch up on the dash. My in-laws have a 7740, and theirs is on the gear shift lever up here. So, it could be several different ways they do this. It's basically, like I say, still basically the same system. So... I think there's one more thing I can show here yet. Okay. I got the owner's manual out for that Ford, and they have in here dual power. Tractors equipped with the dual power option have a hydraulically operated planetary gear set located within the transmission housing, providing direct drive and underdrive. The two speed gear, the two speed power shift gear set. In conjunction with the 8-speed manual transmission, provide a total of 16 forward, 4 reverse speeds. Uh, figure 2 shows a dual power control switch and shift pattern. Pushing the switch forward engages normal direct drive, while pulling the switch rearward engages power under drive. Where's figure 2? Uh, it's clear up at the beginning of book. figure 2. We're up to figure 38. But, again, I think that one's showing a toggle switch. Oh, another thing to remember, like on the dual power. When temperature is below zero degrees and the tractor has a dual power transmission, the control switch must be in the rear power position for the first 15 minutes of operation. Operating with the switch in any other position may result in insufficient oil flow on the dual power clutches because of cold oil. I don't know if that's... What International is going to recommend on the torque amplifier, but for so in the winter time when I shut this tractor down, I always drop it down to the underdrive part of it. So when I start it the next time, it's already in there. But what I can show here too is yeah, six, okay, this is seven, 7710. Okay, this is the speed, this is how Ford breaks theirs down. 1900 is basically PTO speed. 1900 is 540 PTO speed. 2100 is 1000 RPM PO, to PTO speed. So you take fourth gear in at 1900 RPM. You're going 4.7 miles an hour. But if you hit four low, make sure I'm in the right line here. Yeah, four low. It drops you down to 3.66 miles per hour. But you look at three high, it's 3.42 mile an hour. So it's slightly faster. So it's, when I say it drops you down a gear, that's essentially what it is. Somewhere here I th thought I saw it one time where it was said that it increases your torque by 22%. And that might be in the sales literature that you'd get from the dealership. I know I saw that somewhere sometime. But you take like... 
five low is 3.9 or 4.39 five high is 5.64 yeah, or is it? Well, maybe it ain't what I thought it was. I thought there was this jump in here I noticed at one time where, like, it was actually faster to be in five low than it was four high. But it's not. It's essentially the same. But that's, like I say, that's what it does. It ends up increasing your torque by raising your RPMs by gearing it down. So, like, when I was planting corn, I was planting in five high. Five high. Yeah. And I was, I was around 1,600 RPMs, so I was just a little less than five mile an hour. When I mow hay, I'm mowing in five high, so I'm mowing about five and a half mile an hour. Most things I do are in third, fourth, or fifth gear. So four or five mile an hour is more than fast enough. But I guess I'm gonna wrap that up there. See, that's the three different systems that I have. I don't know, Alice Chalmer, I think, has something like that on theirs. Not much up on Alice. I think Massey Ferguson has something. Just I've never been around them tractors much. I know more of the Fords, because that's... Ford seems to be the main tractor around here, other, other than John Deere. But... And the Internationals. Ain't many whites around here anymore. But like I say, I hope that answers some questions for some guys. Again, like I say, if you want to see more on some of these systems, like internationals, uh, just a few acres. Then you got Chris Lucy. Then you got uh, Farm Boy Oliver Farm Boy 66. I don't know anybody who does Fords. I never really come across you know a farm a Ford. No, I mean, there's guys out there, a couple channels I watch, yeah, they run Fords, and that's why I watch them. But they're not like these guys where they're tearing them down all the time or getting more into details of the systems. But, uh, so again, there's stuff out there if you want to go find it. Tried my best to explain it. So, and I hope this doesn't put work up some guys. I've had people tell me I talk too much. I get more done if I quit talking so much. Now it's my channel. I'll put out what I want there. If I want to put commentary, if I want to put out information, I'll do that. You know, ain't no big deal. So with that being said, I guess, comment, rate, subscribe. Seem to be growing the channel fairly at steady pace here at the moment, which is I like. Thanks a lot, and I'll catch up with you again.